So if we're looking for the origins of ancient Egypt, we have to look at the gnomes, the, the districts of the land. And the first gnome was a part of Nubia, Taseti, which was Egyptian Nubia. And that was near the, the part of the Nile, as the Nile flow, flowed from the south to the north, that was the first part of Egypt that met the Nile. And that area, by Egyptian tradition, was the place where dynastic Egypt arose, where the, basically the Egyptian, early Egyptian civilization, the pre-dynastic and the proto-dynastic Egyptian civil, civilization arose according to ancient Egyptian tradition and the tradition of other peoples who wrote about Egypt. And we find that also in the archaeological record. You have the, the early pre-dynastic sites of Kustal and Nakata, both in the first gnome, the Nubia, in, in Egyptian Nubia. So that's where the, that was part of Upper Egypt, the southern part of Egypt, Upper Egypt, and it was that part of Egypt where the the founder of Egypt came from. You know, he, in, he was a king. Uh, he was sometimes called the Scorpion King, which might be the same as Narmer and Menes. Or he was also given a divine name, uh, Herahuti. He was equated with Horus, the falcon god. And he was the one who united the two lands, Upper and Lower Egypt. But he was from Southern Egypt, from Upper Egypt in the area of the archaeological. Well, he would likely have come from that area around Kustal and Nakata in Egyptian Nubia. So now if we look, of course, through Egyptian history, it was one of the longest civilizations uh, in ancient times in terms of its c c continuity and longevity. But eventually, about the time, well, starting with the Assyrian invasion, uh, Egypt became colonized by one uh, empire after another, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, Greeks, the Romans, and then the, of course, the, the Muslim invasions. And during that time, Egypt, of course, there was a lot of movement of people into Egypt, especially into Lower Egypt, the northern part of Egypt, which was a very important trade center for the, the Mediterranean. And sometimes you'll get the argument that, well, if you look at modern Egyptians, that, for example, the Copts, the, you know, the modern Egyptians mostly speak Arabic. That was due to the, the Arabic, the Arab invasions during the Muslim period. And some people claim that there wasn't a lot of Arabs that migrated to Egypt. But that's not historically true. There were actually millions of people from Syria who did migrate into Egypt. But there were still a few, uh, there was still a population of people in Egypt that spoke Coptic, which is related to ancient Egyptian. Now, but of course the, the Coptic peoples, they tend to resemble the, the people who they live by. For example, the, the Copts in, uh, in Egyptian Nubia or in northern Sudan, they resemble the local people there, while the Copts in Lower Egypt, in places like Alexandria, which was a town founded by the Greeks, uh, they resemble people in Lower Egypt in that area, where there was a lot of, it was a very cosmopolitan area, and there was basically from the, the Christian times with the, the Byzantine church, there was a lot of intermixing. So you have this gradient of a, of appearances. But history also tells us that during these invasions, the indigenous Egyptians tended to go 
southward toward Upper Egypt to escape and to basically make their last stand in that area. So that's one, it's basically in Upper Egypt now, especially in the, the rural areas, more isolated areas with the farming communities because the, the Nile Valley civilization was in particular, the Egyptian civilization was an agricultural one. So if you look at those isolated farming communities in Upper Egypt and Egyptian Nubia, that's where you can find the people who most closely resemble the ancient Egyptians.